Let's talk about stress and its relationship in mechanics of solids. So in statics, we introduced rigid body equilibrium. And rigid body equilibrium is all the external things going on in the system. And then we've moved to solids class, mechanics of materials, where we have deformable body equilibrium. And in deformable body equilibrium, we talked about a uh, method of sections. Okay, that's taking a section and using our course's positive sign convention to solve for internal shear, internal normal force, and bending moment. We also have uh, graphs. And the graphs are for axial, torsion, shear, and moment where we can see all the locations for that one force and how it changes throughout the system. Now we're going to take those internal forces and we're going to distribute them over an area and that is stress. This force distribution over an area has lots of different shapes. Uh, but it only has two different directions. So our two directions for stress are the normal direction, which is perpendicular to the surface, and the shear direction, which is parallel to the surface. The first stress that we're going to talk about is average stress. And for average normal stress, we represent that with a sigma. And I'm going to subscript it with average. So there's my average normal stress, and it is the normal force equally distributed over an area. And then we have the shear stress, which I represent with a tau, tau average, and that is the shear distributed over the entire area. So there's my average shear stress and my average normal stress. So here we have a system that is a solid shaft with a 70 millimeter diameter from A to B and then a 40 millimeter diameter from B to D. I have five loads on this system, a four kilonewton pair at B, a seven kilonewton pair at C, and a 12 kilonewton axial force at D. I want to find the maximum average normal stress in the system looks to me like if I want to find the maximum average normal stress, sigma average, n over a. So I need the largest n and the smallest area. That will give me the largest sigma average. I think the quickest way to get the largest internal normal axial force would be an axial force diagram. So I'm going to start by solving for my reactions at a. And since I'm doing an axial force diagram, AX is the only one I care about, and I find that that is equal to 6 kilonewtons to the right. So drawing my diagram, I have a line at the beginning, I have a line at the end, and then I have a line at every change. So there's loads at B, and there are loads at C. Since I'm doing normal stress, I would also do lines at every change in diameter or material, and I have loads at B and a change in diameter at B. So that line at B, I'm going to definitely need that there, plus and minus. So I have zero, and then I have six kilonewtons in compression, so that's going to go down here, six, and then I have no change. Then I have eight kilonewtons to the left, so this is gonna come up here to two. Move across here, I have seven kilonewtons to the right, so it's gonna go way down here to 12. And then I have 12 to the left, so this is going to come back up to zero. 
I see here that my largest axial normal stress occurs over my smaller cross section. So this is going to be where my largest amount of stress is. So I can do my calculation. Sigma average is equal to 12 kilonewtons over, if I have a diameter, that means it's a circular cross section. So the area of a circle is pi over 4 times diameter squared. And this gives me a stress of 9.48 10 to the sixth pascals or mega pascals and it is a negative normal force so that means it is a negative normal stress so this is in compression in this case I have my terribly drawn piece of wall here and I've got a screw and washer system that is being um, screwed in with 150 pounds of axial force. I want to find the shear stress between the screw and the wall with and without the washer. This is why washers are important. So I've drawn down here two side views, one of them with the washer and one of them without. So if I have the washer here, what is being sheared? Well, it's being pushed through the wall here. So it's actually shearing here and here the circumference of the washer, right? So my average shear stress here, which is what it asked for, tau average is equal to V over A, where V is the 150 pounds because that is the force that is parallel to where I'm shearing over my area. Okay, my area is going to be this whole circumference that's being created. So the um, area, the surface area of a cylinder is pi d times the height, which in our case is the thickness of the wall, 1.5 inches, right? That's the surface area being sheared by that washer pushing through the system. And this will give us 31.8 psi of shear stress with the washer. Now if we don't have the washer, now we have our screw that's pushing through the surface, okay, much smaller, right, surface area, but that actually gives us more stress. So tau average here will be still the same 150 pound force, but now over that smaller area, 0 0.5 inches, same depth, and that gives us a shear stress of 63.7 pounds per square inch. Much, much, much higher. So this is why washers are important because it reduces that stress because it increases the surface area that that force is applied over. In this example, we have a beam with a distributed load acting on it that is supported with a pin at A and a link BC. The pin at A is in double shear and has a diameter of 10 millimeters, and the pin at B is in single shear and has a diameter of 12 millimeters. So double shear is this right here that we're talking about. It's getting cut one, two times, so it's in double shear. Pin B is getting cut, if you will, one time, so it is in single shear. Member BC is a circular cross-section and has a material average normal stress strength of 20 megapascals. So what we want to do is find the shear stress in pins A and B on our system and the diameter that I need for member BC uh, to support the system and not exceed our average normal stress. I'm going to start with a free body diagram. My pin at A has reactions AY and AX assuming X and Y, and member BC is a two-force member, so I'm going to have one force here acting in the same direction as uh, pins B and C, so that's going to be at a 3, 4, 5 slope. Starting with summing my moments about A, I find that force BC 
is equal to 204.17 kilonewtons and it acts in compression. Next I will sum my forces in the x direction and find that AX is equal to 122.5 kilonewtons and I got a negative answer which means it's actually acting to the left. And then I'll sum my forces in the y direction and find that AY is equal to 23.33 kilonewtons and it is acting up. Okay, with this information, I can go to my average shear stress. Tau average is equal to the shear force over the area. If I am shearing pin A, okay, coming back up here to my picture, that means that I am shearing it here and here through that cross section. I'm splitting. This is actually pin A. Okay, think grenade pin, right? It goes through to hold the lever shut on the grenade. That's the actual pin. It's the rod that's connecting the entire system together. So I'm shearing it twice. So I need the resultant force that's acting perpendicular to this system. So that's going to be the square root of 122.5 squared plus 23.33 squared is parallel to the surface. So if my pen's cross section is acting on the xy plane, then that means the parallel forces are the X and Y surfaces. And then it's going over the circular cross section, so that is pi over 4 times 10 millimeters squared, and I am in double shear, so there's two of those areas. And I find that the average shear stress in pin A is 794 megapascals, or 10 to the 6th pascals. Let's see, this is in kilonewtons up here. What changes for pin B? It's in single shear. And I already have the resultant force at B because it's a two force member. So I only need that 204.17 kilonewtons over my area, pi over 4 times the diameter, 12 millimeters squared. And that gives me an average shear stress of 1.80 gigapascals or 10 to the ninth pascals. Okay? Why my force resultant? Okay, remember that pin B is this actual circle dot right here. So its cross section is in the xy plane. So parallel to the xy plane would be the force acting in the xy direction. Okay? Pin B is acting in the Z direction. Its axis is in the Z direction. Similarly, okay, I've got member BC. Member BC's axis is in the XY plane, and its cross section is in the Z plane. So that means my average normal stress for BC is going to be my normal force over the area. Now I was given my stress for BC, 20 megapascals, and I'm solving for the diameter. So I have 20 megapascals here is equal to 204.17 kilonewtons because that force is acting in that XY direction that's the same as the axis of my member BC, so it's acting normal to the cross section. And I want diameter, so I'm going to put this pi over 4 diameter squared megapascals is 10 to the 6th pascals, which is a newton per meter squared. Kilonewtons is 1,000 newtons. So that means that my diameter will be in meters. So diameter required is 0.114 meters or diameter required is 114 millimeters to support my system and keep it under or at the stress of 20 megapascals. In this instance, we're given a cantilevered beam 
with a 100 pound force acting through the center of the cross section at a 3, 4, 5 slope. The cross section is 4 inches by 2 inches. Find the average normal and average shear stresses along the AA plane. And that AA plane is at a 50 degree angle. So average normal stress and average shear stress are N over A and V over A, respectively. So I need to find my normal force and my shear force first. So down here at section AA, I'm going to have shear acting parallel to that surface, normal acting perpendicular to the surface, and I don't need it, but it does exist moment. Solving for normal and shear, I find that my normal force is equal to 99.9 .9 pounds in tension and my shear force is equal to a negative 5.46 pounds. I worked a problem very similar to this in deformable body equilibrium lecture, so if you want some more steps, you can find it there. Now that I have those forces, I need that surface area that the forces are acting on. That sloped angle at 50 degrees is creating this green cross-sectional surface area. And it's acting at a slope where this height I'm going to call length AA, right? And then if we're cutting it um, along this line here, this width is still 2 inches but I need that length AA because it's acting at a slope. I can find that with a triangle. So I know that my height is 4 inches and I have an angle here of 50 degrees and I want this length AA sine of 50 degrees is equal to 4 inches divided by length AA and length AA is equal to 5.222 inches. So there is the length along that slope surface. The depth is 2 inches, so I can find my normal stress, which is 99.9 .9 pounds acting over that rectangular cross section, 2 inches, by 5.222 inches and it is equal to 9.56 pounds per square inch and if my normal force is in tension that means my normal stress is also in tension and my average shear stress is equal to that shear force 5.46 pounds which is negative over the same area because it's parallel to that area 5.222 inches and it is equal to a negative 0 0.523 pounds per square inch.